it's time for a history lesson. 222 years ago, an item that would become known as a battery was invented. The White House was used for the first time. The world population level reached 1 billion for the first time, and Traction released a video called The Ultimate Guide to Racecraft and Sim Racing, Part 1. A lot has happened since then, a lot's changed, but one thing that never changes is the need for good racecraft. Seriously though, it's been two British monarchs, three prime ministers and three Watford managers since part one of this mini-series, so I think it's about time we brought you a part two, eh? In the previous video, we covered some of the basics. What is racecraft? Understanding the racing line, where to look, how to overtake and how to force errors. In this section, we're going to take a closer look at the art of defending. Defending is something none of us want to have to do, but to get yourself into that position in the first place, you must have done something right. Before going into the specifics of positioning and so on, it's worth noting some key ideas. Firstly, you need to try your best to stay calm and think about the race as a whole. The bigger picture will often change how you see a particular battle. You need to pick and choose when to fight and when to concede. Is the other driver on the same strategy as you? Are you in with a chance at holding them off until the checkered flag? Or do they have a speed advantage that will inevitably result in them making the move eventually? Do you have a gap behind you? Or are you likely to be hung out to dry and pass by a train of cars? Assess your situation and the risk levels with one eye on the wider story. If the driver is clearly quicker, maybe has a tyre or pace advantage and is driving aggressively, then perhaps it's best not to fight it too hard. It's not the fun answer, or the ambitious answer, but sometimes it's the best thing you can do for your race. They might come back to you later in the race, maybe they're making an extra pit stop, or maybe they're recovering from an early incident and will have the red mist. In these situations, try to let them go without compromising yourself in the process, and then do your best to stick to their tail. If you can follow their lines and rhythm, use their slipstream and keep close. Chances are, the faster car will drag you up to the pack ahead. Then, when they try to make any aggressive moves on those cars, you're in a prime position to pick up the pieces. Defend too hard, and instead of being dragged up to the group in front, you risk being sucked into the group behind. Then things can really begin to snowball. But what about those situations where you have similar pace? Or maybe you're fighting for a championship and every single point counts? Putting up a fight might well be the best option for your race, and this is especially true in shorter sprint races, where tyre wear, strategy and long-term goals are a little less prominent. I'm going to start by covering car positioning. It has to be the most important element, as it is quite literally the physical reality of defending. The classic defensive manoeuvre is, unsurprisingly, to defend the inside line heading into a corner. This prevents the attacking car from making a simple move down the inside, something considered as the standard and most common overtaking method. This will force the attacker to either try and outbreak you on the outside line, which is usually trickier, or to abandon the move and instead focus on setting themselves up for the next corner. Make sure you practice braking on the alternative inside line so that you can spot any change in reference points and you know how the car will react going into the corner from the tighter angle. It also matters how far to the inside you position yourself. Placing the car fully to the inside will give the attacker the chance to use all of the space on the outside, whereas you are forced to take an extremely tight line into a corner. And this will usually result in a bad exit for you, a good exit for them and an overtake before the next corner. I would therefore recommend, if the track is narrow enough, positioning yourself somewhere near the middle of the road. Don't leave enough room on the inside for someone to squeeze past, but equally, don't leave enough room on the outside for someone to position themselves alongside. If your car is wide enough to prevent a car's width of free space on either side, then you have the positional advantage under braking. Sometimes the track is simply too wide to cover both gaps, in which case you have to think on your feet. You want to enter the corner from as wide an angle as possible, without leaving a gap for someone to exploit down the inside. The corner exit in a defensive situation will always be key. You need to be switched on and always focused on maximising your exit speed, even if it means completely compromising your mid-corner speed. It's like I said earlier, if you focus too much on completely blocking the inside line, the laws of physics dictate that you will have compromised your exit, and this will leave you highly vulnerable. In some situations then, it's actually a better form of defence to concede the position in a braking zone, if they're going for a big lunge down the inside for example. If you think they're braking too late and their exit speed is going to be compromised, don't try and match them under braking. The likelihood is you'll both run wide, both lose time and whoever's on the inside will probably come out on top. However, if you focus on staying wide and hitting your marks, you can get a better corner exit, as they slide wide and you regain the position. This up and under manoeuvre is often referred to as the cutback. Every sim racer loves a well-executed cutback, and often there's nothing the original attacker can do about it. 
as they've had to severely compromise their own corner exit in order to try the overtake in the first place. There is another positional tactic that you can adopt if you're defending on the inside line, and I guess this can also be applied to when you're attacking on the inside. This is more something for touring car style sprint racing rather than endurance racing. It can be a bit of a rude tactic, and if you misuse it, you will become very unpopular, so I'm not taking any responsibility for those of you who take it too far and block unfairly. The tactic is known by a number of names. In an attacking sense, you can say it's a block pass. In a defensive sense, you can call it parking on the apex, or hanging them out to dry. Think Rosberg and Hamilton in Austria 2016, but far less extreme. When you are on the inside, you get a good entry, but a compromised exit. When you're on the outside, you compromise your entry to get a good exit. So then, how about being on the inside to get yourself a good entry, but using clever positioning mid-corner to prevent the other driver from getting the good exit that they're due? This sounds pretty mean, and it is, but if done correctly and respectfully using sensible positioning rather than deliberate blocking, it's simply good defending. If you're on the inside line and can get the car slowed down in time to still just about make the apex, you can hold your car on that tighter line, which stops the attacking car from carrying their momentum and performing the cutback. The whole idea here is that you compromise yourself in the middle of the corner rather than the exit itself. Do it at a time where the car on the outside is needing the space to utilise their optimal angle. Whatever you do, don't deliberately block as an immediate reaction or stamp on the brakes when you should be exiting the corner. Basically, do it carefully and with clever preemptive positioning. Don't just, well, be an arse. Sim racing etiquette, by the way, is something I do want to cover in the next video. So, in terms of positioning, those are the key factors for most standard overtaking opportunities, but bear in mind that every corner, situation, car and driver is unique, so these tactics and ideas won't work every time. As always, racing requires quick thinking and the ability to adapt to any situation, but the more tools you have in your arsenal, the better. Aside from the physical acts of defensive driving, there are some more general tips that will help you keep your rivals behind, the first of which is to avoid over-defending. Over-defending is when you try to defend from an overtake, even when the car behind wasn't close enough to be making an overtake. You may hear commentators criticising drivers for defending mid-air, and what they're saying is that the driver has defended the inside line when there was simply no need to do so. This results in a compromised line into the corner, and vulnerability on corner exit like we discussed earlier. The key to avoiding this is to stay calm, be aware of the gap to the driver behind, and if it's comfortable and safe for you to do so, always take your ideal racing line into the corner. Speaking of being aware, just because this is virtual racing doesn't mean you shouldn't be using your mirrors. Many racing games have settings you can adjust for your mirrors, so make sure you choose a setting where you can clearly see what's going on behind and around you. This far better allows you to judge whether there is a need for defensive positioning or not. Just make sure you don't drive solely on your mirrors. It's very easy to get distracted and miss a braking point, or simply spend more time looking behind you than ahead. The best bit of advice I can give you is to glance at your mirrors when you're exiting a corner, allowing you to judge your next move. If you need to, have another glance, or two as you head down the straight, but once you're close to the braking zone, you need to have already decided your line and be focusing on your braking point. Normally, if a car does decide to go for a late move down the inside from a long way back, you'll be able to catch this in your peripheral vision, and if you need to leave space, you can still do so. This is also why it's important to have a clear view of the mirrors on screen. Seeing what's going on behind you also allows you to learn about the following car's patterns of behaviour. You can begin to gauge how aggressive they are, where they are stronger than you and where they are weaker. You can learn their lines and driving style, all of which is key information to help you make defensive decisions. Use the information wisely, decide where it is you need to reposition your car and which corners you can attack at full pace without defensive driving. Again, just try not to stare at your mirrors and braking zones. A quick glance every so often and a little bit of peripheral vision should be enough to give you an idea of what's going on behind you. To summarise then, the key to strong defensive driving is the ability to position your car intelligently, whilst remaining calm under pressure, being aware of your surroundings, and being respectful and fair to your competition. Sounds easy, right? Again, always remember to keep one eye on the bigger picture. A heroic defensive display can be amazing, but can equally be dangerous if not executed in the right way. It's really not worth crashing over a lost position, and sometimes losing that position can turn out to be the thing that wins you the race, so always bear that in mind. Equally, despite the advice in this video, remember that every circuit, every corner, every circumstance is unique. A late apex or a tightening trajectory, for example, may require a totally different technique to defend correctly, and some corners are high speed, and any overtaking or defensive manoeuvre is strongly discouraged. 
Every move you make, attacking or defending, requires quick thinking and the ability to adapt. As I always say, the more practice and experience you gain, the easier all of these things will become. Good luck. So that brings an end to part two of this series. Hopefully it's helped you lot pick up a trick or two when it comes to defending. Keep an eye out for part three where we cover a highly divisive topic, racing etiquette. If you do find these videos useful, make sure you leave us a like and subscribe to the Traction channel if you don't want to miss any future uploads. That's it for me today, so as always, thank you so much for watching, keep it pinned, and have a great day.